Roberto Duran was perhaps the greatest lightweight of all time. He built a style around infighting that was entirely unique, using grappling to supplement his striking and ring control. Many of his techniques fell out of use in boxing, and have only recently seen a resurgence in mixed martial arts. In the last breakdown, we looked at how Duran used grappling to upset his opponent's balance and manipulate their distance. This time, we'll look at how Duran transitioned from these wrestling ties to trap his opponent's arms and create new openings of attack. We'll start with Duran's favorite position, an overhook. Duran would stop using this position to wrestle his opponent and instead trap his arm in the crook of his elbow or side. He would then throw a shovel hook to his opponent's exposed ribs. Duran could either twist his opponent's elbow up or pull his arm straight. Although Duran had a limited grip with his boxing gloves, he could use his wrists or elbows to execute a surprising amount of pulls. Duran could effectively use underhooks for this same purpose, tilting his opponent into his punch and amplifying his power. Duran also used underhooks for ring control, turning his opponents if he got caught on the ropes and attacking them while they were off balance. Cutting off the ring on Duran wasn't a reliable strategy for his opponents, as they were essentially just taking themselves to the corner for him. The last position Duran commonly used to set up his punches was a collar tie. He would grab his opponent's neck and pull his head into the punch. Duran also used head control to trap his opponents in place to set up his cross. I mentioned last time that Duran was an expert at hand fighting his opponent to find impossibly tight angles from which to attack. His most brilliant technique was to wait for his opponent to overcommit by pushing too hard, and then disengage to attack the new opening. This became even more confusing for his opponents when Duran suddenly switched the purpose of either hand, turning his grappling hand into his striking hand, and vice versa. In fact, Duran's most powerful close range attack involved him using his normally offensive lead hand to clear space for his grappling hand to throw a devastating uppercut. This insanely tight diagonal uppercut whipped his opponent's head back, positioning it perfectly to follow up with the lead hook. At the beginning of his fights, Duran kept his head on his opponent's lead shoulder, out of reach from his power hand. But as the fight went on, Duran began to move out of this position into progressively more offensive ones. While some talented boxers can move into close range to attack and then back out to safety, Duran's strategy was to do the exact opposite, moving out to attack and then back into safety. Leaning his head on his opponent's rear shoulder allowed Duran to attack his head with rear hooks and crosses and allowed him the reach to deliver his devastating liver shots. Duran could deftly switch between either shoulder position, weaving his head over or under his opponents to attack different angles and avoid blows. The precision with which he did this was nothing short of incredible. When Duran knew he had his opponent beat, he would straighten up and move out to mid-range to attack with more power. His strategy was to weave or roll into mid-range to punch and then move back to either shoulder position for safety. It was a constant changing of positions between these three points, with Duran's non-stop head movement loading up his punches and keeping him safe at the same time. In the end, it wasn't Duran's infighting that was the most dangerous aspect of his game, but instead, it was his ability to seamlessly move between all ranges, which made him one of the greatest masters boxing has ever seen. For the modern martial artist, this has been David Christian. Wishing you happy training.